Welcome listeners to the Overlook Podcast, which is one of the podcasts that is produced by Tunuka Media. I'm your host, Yemi, and every week I bring you Overlook stories from all over the world. The world is a vast and diverse place, so these stories will include the good, the bad, and the weird. Be sure to come back each week, share the podcast with your friends, and hit the magic subscribe button. To get regular updates on the show and what we're up to, connect with Tunuka Media on social media. Your support is priceless, so don't forget to give a like or a high rating wherever you enjoy your podcasts. Now, it's time for this week's episode. Hi there, welcome to the podcast or welcome back if you've been here for a while. This week, we have various stories including a pack of blue dogs in Russia, a new minister for happiness in Japan, and the release of a human rights activist who had been held in detention for over a thousand days. Before we jump in, don't forget that Tunuka Media will be at the PodFest Global Summit. We have a discount code that will get you $49 off any ticket. Just enter the code Tunuka Media as one word at the top of the ticket selection page through the link in our Instagram or social media bio. The link will also be in the show notes. You can actually get a free entry-level pass ticket just by using that discount code. So that's it for the announcement. Let's get right into this week's show. A large, high-production brewery believed to be the world's oldest has been uncovered by a team of archaeologists at the Abydos funerary site in southern Egypt. According to reports, the Buri likely dates back to the era of King Narmer, who ruled more than 5,000 years ago, founded the First Dynasty, and unified Upper and Lower Egypt. According to a statement by the Tourism Ministry, British archaeologists first discovered the existence of the Buri at the beginning of the 20th century, but its location was never precisely determined. The joint Egyptian-American team was able to relocate and uncover its content, according to the ministry statement. Abydos, where the later discovery was unearthed, has yielded many treasures over the last few years and is famed for its temples such as that of Seti I. A mission working near Alexandria also recently discovered several mummies from around 2,000 years ago bearing golden-tongued amulets. These are thought to have been placed in the mouths of the dead to ensure that they could speak in the afterlife. Authorities had initially expected 50 million tourists to visit Egypt in the year 2020 in a way to boost the tourism sector. However, unfortunately, the pandemic of 2020 got in the way. A powerful earthquake struck off Fukushima in Japan this weekend. It caused buildings to shake violently in Tokyo, along with widespread power outages. More than 100 people suffered injuries, according to the Kyoto News Agency. There is thankfully no threat of a tsunami. This week's quake came nearly 10 years after a more powerful quake had caused a massive tsunami to hit Fukushima Prefecture on March 11, 2011. That quake was responsible for the death of over 16,000 people and subsequently caused three nuclear reactors to melt down at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. As wild as it may seem, the Japanese Meteorological Agency said this weekend's quake was an aftershock from the 2011 Tohoku earthquake tsunami. It also warned that the affected areas should be prepared for possible aftershocks of similar scale over the next week. Earthquakes are common in Japan. Japan lies close to the so-called Ring of Fire, a region around the Pacific Rim where the Earth's tectonic plates meet. Despite this, according to reports, residents of Tokyo said that this was the strongest quake that they had experienced in years, possibly since the 2011 one. So we're going to hang out in Japan for a little longer for the next story. The Japanese Prime Minister has appointed Regional Revitalization Minister Tetsushi Sakamoto as a part-time Minister of Loneliness to address the issue of loneliness and isolation. This comes after a report that showed an increase in suicide rates linked to pandemic-related isolation. 
The data also showed that women were suffering more than men. According to the reports, Minister Sakamoto is slated to assemble a team dedicated to interagency communication and will host an emergency forum with advocacy groups and other players as early as this month to identify top priorities. The UK also appointed a minister of loneliness in the year 2018, so Japan is not necessarily alone. Isolation can be exacerbated during natural disasters and other catastrophes. Encouraged to stay home and to avoid crowded spaces or close contact situations during the pandemic, older Japanese people who are not used to communicating online have found themselves becoming more and more isolated from the outside world. Even younger, tech-savvy generations have also struggled with protracted social distancing efforts in the country. Closed offices and schools mean that these people have less contact with colleagues and friends, and I'm sure a lot of us can empathize. Many people have also lost jobs, and this is adding economic stress to their situation. This has been mentally tasking, to say the least, for a lot of people across different age groups including children, young people, women, and older people. So the appointment of the Minister of Loneliness is a way to help people that may be struggling. With that being said, I really understand that the last year and some change has been really, really trying for a lot of people. Um, Mental health is just as important as physical health, if not more so. So don't hesitate to reach out to someone, talk to someone, give someone a call, or reach out to a mental health professional in your area to just make sure you're checking in, right? Take that first step. And there was something I saw on social media, specifically Instagram recently, and it says, don't be afraid to check on your strong friends. And the strong is in code here. Because a lot of people look strong on the outside, but they're suffering in silence because, you know, they're trying to hold themselves up for everybody else. So as I say that, while you're checking in on yourself, make sure you stretch a hand forward and outward to help someone else. I hope everyone is taking that time to, you know, just do that health check that we all need, to be quite frank. A prominent women's rights advocate has been released from jail in Saudi Arabia after just over a thousand days. Lujain Adhatlu had been detained on charges that included seeking to change Saudi Arabia's political system and harming national security. Her sister, Lina, shared the news on Twitter. Although released, Al-Hatlul will remain under strict conditions, including a five-year travel ban and three years of probation. According to Amnesty International, Lujan Al-Hatlul is one of the most prominent and outspoken women human rights defenders in Saudi Arabia. She is well known for her campaign against the driving ban, including posting videos of herself driving as part of a 2013 campaign. She also campaigned to end the male guardianship system. Under the male guardianship system, a woman's father, brother, husband, or son has the authority to make critical decisions on her behalf. A Saudi woman is required to then obtain a male relative's approval to apply for a passport, travel outside the country, study abroad on a government scholarship, get married, live prison, or even exit a shelter for abuse victims. In 2019, the Saudi government eased restrictions around the male guardianship system, but did not fully abolish it. As an example, women now have the right to obtain a passport and travel abroad without a male relative's permission. Saudi officials had detained her in 2018. For the first 10 months of her detention, she was held without charges or trial. At the time of her detention, She was detained along with 11 other women's rights activists. Officials insisted that Ms. Al-Hatlu was not arrested because of her activism, but rather her contacts with foreign diplomats, media, and other organizations. The family vowed to clear her name from what they say are unjust charges. They want a travel ban lifted, reparations for time spent in prison, and Saudi newspapers held accountable for what they say was a campaign of defamation. A lot of people from all over the world are familiar with the U.S. game show called Jeopardy. 
I grew up watching it and I still watch Jeopardy to relax at least a few times every week. George Alex Trebek was the beloved host of the show who hosted 37 seasons from the years 1984 until he passed away last year. He was known to be a very kind person in his lifetime and was a longtime philanthropist and activist. Now, his son is continuing with his legacy of giving and kindness. A significant portion of Alec Trebek's on-set wardrobe from the game show Jeopardy is being donated to the Doe Fund. The Doe Fund is a nonprofit that helps underserved individuals, especially men, who are bouncing back from homelessness or incarceration to get back on their feet. I'm a huge fan of Alex, and like millions of others, I was heartbroken when he died. In fact, I actually cried when, after finding out he was battling cancer, one of the contestants wrote, We love you, Alex, in place of the correct answer. We do love you, Alex. And as someone who watched you for well over 20 years, I can certainly say that Jeopardy is not the same with you gone. As I said before, he was known to be very kind in his lifetime. And knowing that his legacy will continue in this way is pretty darn incredible. It's another testament to his unending spirit of giving that he showed during his lifetime. The Doe Fund will be getting 14 full suits, 58 dress shirts, 300 neckties, 25 polos, 14 sweaters, 9 blazers, 9 pairs of dress shoes, 15 belts, 2 parkers, and 3 pairs of slacks. And to wrap up this episode, a pack of stray dogs from Russia has gone viral across the world. Well, not that viral. Of course, it is still you know overlooked but if you scour the reaches of the internet i do you'll see um yeah it went viral there um so yeah a park of stray dogs from russia has gone viral um thanks to their strange blue coloring the animal strange blue coloring is thought to have been caused by chemical waste such as copper sulfate the photos were taken by a local near the Jazinkoye or Getstoklo plant, which was once a large chemical production facility making hydrocyanic acid and plexiglass, but fell into disuse about six years ago. I fully acknowledge that I did not pronounce that name properly, so I'm going to spell it out. So the first word is D Z E R Z H I N S K O Y E. And the second word is O-R-G-S-T-E-K-L-O. It is going to be in the show notes. It's going to be on the blog. So you can check it out there. Authorities in the city are now planning to catch the dogs and give them a full medical checkup. And that brings us to the end of this episode. Don't forget to click the link in our social media bio to join us at PodFest Global or... If you're feeling particularly generous, financially support the show by sending virtual cups of coffee. We are using the Buy Me A Coffee service, so that's what you're going to see. The relevant links are in the show notes and on the blog. As you go into your week, in the spirit of Valentine's, don't forget to share love with someone else. Buy a cup of coffee for someone or something. It doesn't have to be us. But just know that a little definitely goes a long way. Catch you all on the next episode. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to tune in every week for a new episode. Overlooked is a Tunica Media production, which also includes shows like Africa in My Kitchen, with more on the way. So follow Tunica Media on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter to be in the loop. Until next time, have yourself a great week ahead.